So, <coughs> welcome to the third European talk show here in Sitka, Spain. We have with us uh, about uh, 40 to 50 participants from 17 nations. We are here to discuss respectfully, factual and diverse about a topic that has made world news recently, and that is the Catalonian crisis. And we want to understand what it actually means for Europe. Let me summarize quickly what actually happened um, in the last six months. I know that the story is certainly much longer, that, but to get us all into the picture. So October 1st, a referendum took place, which was called uh, by the Spanish Constitutional Court illegal. And uh, there were some actions from the Spanish government to actually uh, avoid that, um, uh, that referendum. Um, there were some people injured, some reports say over 800. Um, there are, um, uh, was a very low participation rate of just 43%, but at the end the turnout showed that about 90% of those 43% uh, were in favor of that. By October 27th, the um, uh, uh, Catalonian government then made the Declaration of Independence, and the Spanish government reacted by actually sacking the leaders of this um, uh, government. Um, Eleven of them were on the list, the five fled, two came to prison, the parliament was dissolved, and a new election was called, um, and an interim government out of Madrid was installed. On December 21st, the election was repeated, and the separatist movement won again. The turnout was this time over 80%, and they won with a very narrow majority, but still now they have a two-seat majority in the parliament. The um, recent uh, events are that the interim government from Madrid is still in place because the new uh, elected government uh, from December uh, took some time to define their, uh, the prime minister. That has been recently done, but as the news from yesterday show us that uh, Madrid has not been willing yet to actually withdraw the interim uh, government. So, as we are here very close uh, to Barcelona, the capital, and I think the center of this uh, discussion, it is for us very important to actually to start to understand what happened in the last six months here. And so I would like to open the talk show by inviting uh, three people from Spain, Catalonian, non-Catalonian, to join me here and to share with us how they experienced the last six months from their point of view. I'm Marto and um, I'm from, from here, from Catalonia, and, and I'm pro-independence. I, I feel really angry. Really and angry? Really, yes. Im I feel impotent to, because we can't do anything uh, against Spain. And okay. against, we, we feel that we have uh, 10 people in prison and uh, we, they will be there for 30 years and we can't do anything for them. So you said 10 people in prison and for 30 years, so is there already a verdict? They done? are, they are uh, the, the sentence, they, are, uh, they haven't been shut yet, mm -hmm. and uh, the sentence they are uh, affronting is for 30 years of prison. The potential? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm Edward, I'm also from here, from Barcelona. Actually, my view is a little different because I live in Germany already for three years. When you start thinking things can not go worse, they keep growing and growing and escalating. And it's somehow like, what are you doing there, guys? Like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. like, and you expect something else from a government from both sides, like regional and central government. And in the end, I can only feel there's some secret agenda in behind or they, they are not really caring about people as a government you should lead so Ido, you you saw this the whole last six months from germany yeah and did you feel that the information you received was was good for you to get a full picture of what's really going on yeah i guess uh, most of my friends living here my family is here i'm always reading the news from Spain. Like, I really mm -hmm. care about it. I don't want to break every connection with my country. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm living in Germany, but there's a reason for that. I've been studying abroad. I've been very active in international associations. I have a, this global view or European point of view. And no one is thinking about it like this. Like, the focus is so, so 
small. So here in Catalonia, nobody is thinking about that, what you just experienced as for you being very valuable. Yeah, but not only in Catalonia, because I think Catalonia is quite dynamic and quite mm -hmm. open. But treating the issue as a local thing in the actual world, it, it doesn't make sense. Okay. And so I was expecting more from a Spanish government, from Catalan government, and especially from other governments in Europe. And I'm okay. so, so disappointed with that. Okay. Okay, I'm Tony from Barcelona. And my, my, point, my point of view is that it has been like the Spanish government makes some kind of oppression about everything. It's like using the authority or some ways that they are not like that the way to to approach the people you cannot force the people to do things if you want some kind of approach mm -hmm. and the Catalan government maybe don't make they take the best decisions but in reality they don't have some kind of power because the power of Spain is, is really hard to have all the all the judges and all and the structure is supporting like the United Union of Spain. And there is no so much super from from Europe we could say. They everyone who who you ask and any country it will say, no, that's an internal issue and we will not talk about that because there there is interest because Spain is part of well, it's one of member of the United Europe and they don't want to make, I don't know, some kind of conflict. We will come to the subject of Europe and the behavior of the other European nations later okay. on uh, in, our, in our talk show here. At this point in time, we'll really be interested what you felt uh, like uh, when on October 27th uh, the, the declaration was done. What was your personal reaction on that day? For, for me, well, I, I, I used it to be in, Can in you politics. Can you raise I, I used it to, to check all the news and know what's going on. And I know it that Spain will come with, with that article that is called the 155. Mm -hmm. That is, is like some kind of thing that they use to take off the the, the government of Catalonia and take the power, like mm -hmm. legally. And then I say, okay, they are going to make some independence, but there is nothing behind that. There is only it's it's like fighting against against the rules. Like they have like all the rules, and they have this article that make them be take the control like legally, and and it will be not, and the Catalan people will not take mm, guns and go to fight. It's not it's developed people. We are like a country, like a developed country, and we will not take that kind of violence of anything, but. But when you you don't have any any power to fight against that, it's like okay, they will make the independence, but it's not a real independence. And it's only to make I will, I will say independence, but there is not a plan for that. Mm -hmm. The plan is that Spain will come and will cut everything. Marta, would you agree with that? That that's not a real plan for independence. Mm -hmm. Can you hand over the microphone? It's not a real plan, but. Um we try to, to have more uh, economical independence, as, as has the region of, of Bilbao and San Sebastián mm. in Spain, but we couldn't get that. So then we, we said, OK, uh, we want the independence. So but on October 27th, nevertheless, were you happy? That, that I was happy, yes. Yeah? Yes. And did you feel everybody around you felt yes. the same? Yes. And within your family, is the, uh, does everybody have the same opinion? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. So all very Not clear. Not all my friends, but my okay. family. Yes. So when, when your friends have a different opinion, yes. does it I, does it Im impact your friendship? We cannot really discuss this this uh, mm -hmm. topic because um, ones are uh, ones are uh, they they want uh, united Spain. They don't want to be independent, but they know that the government is not acting good, and uh, I I. I want in the independence, and when I tell them, yes, I am independentist, I am going to that demonstration, or I'm doing, I'm doing that, they, they just don't like that. <laughs> yes. Okay. When you were in Germany, Edu, did you feel um, disconnected, or did you feel 
angry about what happened or that you could not participate? How did you look at it from the distance? I, I, I couldn't vote that day. You could not vote? I couldn't vote. Um, no. It was so difficult because the government was not supporting an uh, official vote. So the system is controlled by the uh, Spanish government. Mm -hmm. So uh, if there's a regular election, there's a full system working behind so you can vote from other countries. But since it was a regional thing and the government was against, all this system was not working, it was off. It was off question. So I couldn't vote. I was freaking out seeing the, the, the news, the police beating people, stuff like that. And when the, they stated uh, the president was uh, declaring the independence and so on, I, I was like, how are we like this? How we reach this point when no one is talking to each other, where um, the Spanish government on their own is stopping voting, beating people, fighting it on their own. And the regional government is acting also on their own, like all the connections were completely broken. Mm -hmm. And one is saying independence, and the other are saying like, yeah, then the, the, the rule of law will come after you. And it's like a chain of events and everything is escalating. So did you expect actually what happened uh, on, on the referendum, the reaction from the Spanish government side, or was it a surprise? It was not a surprise at all, because, uh, especially because the kind of government we have now. Hmm. Um, it's this uh, right-wing uh, party and they're always pushing forward these national issues like the big Spain, United Spain and so on. And it's what Tony said before, like somehow the laws are there and they only work in favor of one side. You cannot mess with that. There will never be any chance if you go against it. So does that mean that the um, independence movement doesn't have a chance to win legally? As it is now, without any change in constitution or any law, mm -hmm. it's impossible. You want to add something to that? I saw you shake. <laughs> they will never allow to, to have an independence Catalonia right now. So but when you said that's what you want, how does it make you feel? I feel angry, yes, impotence, like... And when you see that they react with force, is, there, is that the price you have to pay to go? Or isn't it, doesn't there need to be some activity to prevent that to happen? I think that what they should have done before um, saying uh, directly we want the independence, and declaring uh, the independence, they should have uh, looked for some help outside of Spain and su support outside of Spain, not do it alone, because mm -hmm. there's no, no way to, to fight Spain again, uh, alone. Yeah. Well, as, as we said, you cannot fight against the laws of Spain and because Spain makes the laws. And as you can see, there is a lot of people who went to prison um, some of them, they are not judges, it's like preventive p prison, but I don't know, preventive prison forever, or I don't know. It's like why you can have a, a man in a prison, like in a preventive way, if it's not so clear what he did. And there are a lot of investigation now. And, well, uh, as, as the, um, um, Spain was asking to, to to Belgium and to Berlin to, with these international orders mm -hmm. to return all the, the people who is like, I don't know the word in English is exilia, exiliated. Mm, but the, that governments, are, that right now they are not taking like some clear decisions. They are investigating in that. It seems that they don't want to give mm, the people to the government of Spain because they don't see where is the, um, the legal problem. Uh, and Spain is starting to get in some kind of angry. Um, I don't know if 
maybe it's making some kind of anti-European feeling in, in the Spanish side about that issues, and I don't think really good ho what, how it w will end. Mm -hmm. I would like to understand a little bit the, you know, the arguments or the facts behind the different opinions. You know, when you look to the election, uh, now from uh, December, mm -hmm. it's nearly 50-50, right? It's a very short, very small majority for independence uh, group, but also in the independence group, if I understood the voting right, these three parties that would, are forming the majority are completely in disagreement about what they personally want to achieve in their agendas. So what are the, the arguments that you are actually changing for saying, I'm, I, I really understand what independence means and I really understand what we will not get if we don't get independence. Is that clear or is it a simple emotional, personal position that you have? Is it factual or is it emotional? It's both, you could say, because um, some of people think that the things will be better if Catalonia goes along, we could say, because um, in Spain there is two important cities, it's Madrid and Barcelona, and the numbers are, are clear. Um, so if, you, if you take one of these cities and go along, it's normally an it will be okay economically talking, we could say. But, um, but there is a lot of feeling about how you feel because Catalan is like something from your family. You usually talk Catalan in your family and it's a really familiar language. Um, you always will take with, in Catalan with someone who knows Catalan. If there are two people who knows Catalan and Spanish, you will choose Catalan because it's like the familiar one. Mm -hmm. Okay. You make some kind of feeling, and if you see these attacks that are coming from Spain, and they are attacking this language, as it's it's a language that has to be protected because there is no spoken in any other place, and it's like some kind of unnecessary language we could say because it's only familiar, because all the people in Catalonia speak Spanish and Catalan. Well, I'll, I'll know I'll, all of them know Spanish, but then you ask. And why we need Catalan? Mm, be, because everybody knows Spanish, and this is uh, some kind of thing that makes like Catalan the the weak, the weak language we could say, mm -hmm. because the Spanish language is really strong, and there is spoken a, a, in a lot of, a lot of places in the world, and but it's like Catalan is only in one in one re region. There is nothing more in in, in the other parts of the world. Okay. It's like some kind of extinction um, thinking, we could say. Okay. <coughs> Marta, would we really like to understand from your side what, what, are you, what do you think are really the benefits um, of a separation, of an independence? There, there are two, two sides. One, one economical, economically, clearly, um, we are losing money uh, being inside of Spain. And uh, there's another side, uh, as, as you said, a cultural side. We are different from a Spanish culture. We, we have a different language. We, we think different. We, we are not as um, unionist uh, Catholics as they are, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there are both sides. And now the, this um, feel, feeling uh, side is stronger. Uh, with those late, late facts that okay. has happened. Okay. Edu, anything to add to that before we maybe close the first session? Uh, I just want to be factual. And of course, Barcelona can work economically without Spain. But it's also, of course, Spain cannot work without Barcelona in it. Hmm. If we think about any country, I think the, the it's very clear uh, the cultural part, the tradition, the history. Yeah, uh, it's obvious that Catalonia is a different place uh, because of the language, because of the people, because of the kind of industry, the kind of uh, companies that are here and in the rest of Spain. But I, I don't want to focus on what I'm really missing is this trying to be why do people have to justify independence i'm still waiting for someone to justify the no independence just to work together to be better together 
and uh, it, it's very easy to to understand that like uh, there's no real debate that's mm -hmm. what I really miss like let's be honest let's put the numbers on the table like uh, obviously Catalonia is paying more taxes than other parts in Spain so let's be clear with that let's do a plan of investments in here and in other regions and uh, opening this debate it's what most people in Spain don't want because one of the possible outcomes after that may be independence Okay, please introduce yourself and say where you come from. Yes, I'm, I'm Ilka and from Germany. From Germany. Okay, hello Ilka. Do you want to add just some yeah. opinion? Yeah, I think uh, exactly what Eduardo said at the end is, is what I think is the critical question. I mean, in Europe we've always been aiming at like becoming a, a, a grander union or like keeping the countries together, being like talking also about economical um, um, f uh, that it being in, in favor of the economy and now if he's saying you know like just let, let's have an open debate if this is actually making sense like maybe independence is what's best for Catalonia then I think that would open up the discussion for whole Europe because there are so many regions that might want to be independent because they have a different cultural background and so it's it's a bit like it would be a swift in in the mind change uh, I would say or in the mindset that we have been having in Europe after the World War because and in that sense I think it's a very relevant question for mm -hmm. Europe. Hi, um, I'm Rob. I'm from the UK. So what I would say is it's 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 a very much a relevant issue for Europe. I was born in Scotland. We went through a similar, albeit not quite as tumultuous, process um, a few years back with independence. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would say the challenge is that, yes, that whilst I, th I think we would want Europe as a whole to be as unified as possible, there is definitely a challenge that seems to be coming up from various places, not just Scotland, not just Catalonia, but all over the place, in terms of what level of regional identity do we want to accept within that, and how do we have an open and frank discussion about that? And I would say that the challenge here is that it doesn't, it doesn't feel like that open and frank and honest discussion is necessarily happening as effectively as it should. And that maybe that will bring up some uncomfortable points. And maybe, maybe it will mean that things in Europe have to change or have to be rethought through. But I think not having that discussion, not allowing that to happen, may cause some harm down the line and may further divide people rather than keep them together. It must be probably really a European uh, issue because actually in, in almost any country in Europe you would have some parts which are more or less separatist. Even in Finland we have this archipelago called Åland uh, which mm -hmm. is Swedish speaking and like they well they're very autonomous and probably like they economically wouldn't be a viable state, but like nonetheless they have a strong regional identity and don't maybe consider themselves really as Finnish. And I guess you have that in almost any country. But in that particular case, if they would start something similar to what we just have heard from Catalonia, how would you feel about that? I, I don't know. Like I, Honestly, I guess in Finland, probably like people wouldn't really care whether like Holland is part of Finland or not. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's no, that, that, that it's doesn't say more about this is part of Finland or about the Finnish people. I don't know. No, no, but like it's yeah. It well, let's say it's just a small archipelago of a few islands. Like mm. it's it's not a, a huge symbol. Like there's not a uh, one of the uh, largest cities in the in the country there. Mm. So it's really hard to to compare that. Like. Uh, like with the situation here, for instance. Okay. Um, so yes, yeah, so like my, my point was that it, it concerns us all, of course. And like, if you would have like maybe one region that would become independent, then like there could be like a domino, you know, effect and like mm -hmm. the, the the kind of <coughs> trouble or hope, depending on on which side you are, like would probably then spread spread around. Uh, but the the one thing which concerns me is that Europe should be built on on trust and sharing. And of course, like we, they still are very important uh, differences in income in the different regions of Europe. And the only way to make it work is to get all of us like more or less on an even uh, level. 
And if it's so hard within a country to accept that there are like some economical transfers from one richer country to another, and if that's the fuel for, um, uh, for like wanting to be independent, then like that's really hard to build anything sustainable on the continental level if al mm -hmm. already on the country it's, it's, it's hard and people don't want to accept that. Yeah, the aspect of solidar solidarity is, I guess, is part of what keeps uh, Europe together, right? Yeah. That's yeah. how things work. And if everybody who wants to be, uh, who says I'm, I'm uh, economically independent, I want to be independent, I don't want to be part of it, then the whole solidarity thing wouldn't work. I yeah. think that's uh, what you said. Coming back from that question to Germany, how would you feel if in Germany a, a separatist movement like the one in Catalonia would start? I guess we can all imagine that Bavaria might want to separate <laughs> from Germany, but um, I, I was also thinking about it because I'm, I'm, I'm from northern Germany and I don't feel like a northern German, I feel like a German, so it's like for me there's a strong national identity or I feel like a German and in that sense I also don't mind uh, like giving more money to other parts of Germany because I think we're a united country and that's how it should work from my point of mm. view. So. But I guess that's also, yeah, it always comes back to the, the question of identity. And if, if you have some regions that don't identify with the rest of the country, then you probably don't have that sense of sharing with everyone. And I guess that's also the, the idea of Europe. Of, of like, I mean, the idea was to, to keep peace in, in Europe and also to have everyone yeah, living with equal and, and high um, living standards. So that also always inquires for me that, that everyone should yeah, have this kind of sense of shared identity or shared values. And I think that's very hard to, to reach. Also, that's, that would be like a very long process and a very long debate. I mean, and yeah, that's like, it's, it's the easiest, easier way, as, as you also said, to like shut it down at the moment, mm -hmm. just to keep the peace somehow. And I think it's just hard and a really long way if we would want to reach that through other channels. And this identity is there. Why is that coming out now? Why, why is that uh, something that uh, drives uh, people's determination to, to make a change to the, to the setup of, of their state? Why is it something that is important for the people? What do you think? I actually don't know. I actually don't, wouldn't know why it's coming up now. I mean, I don't, I don't have that feeling mm -hmm. from my point of view. So it would be interesting to hear it from somebody who actually... Yeah feels like that in their country. Maybe looking a little bit on your situation, Rob, again, because yeah. I think with your Scottish background, you certainly mm. bring in um, a lot of different views yes. uh, into that subject, especially with the Brexit. Uh, um, you have, uh, you're part of a, of a country, I would say, that uh, has decided actually to leave a union. Um, and uh, then you had the separatism activities within, um, within, the, uh, within Great Britain. What I would actually be interested in, do you feel actually that you get well informed about what happens in Catalonia? Or if, do you feel that actually that, that situation is also used in the media in Great Britain to either push one or the other opinion? It is very interesting that, especially within Scotland, after the referendum, a lot of the newspaper media remains quite heavily biased one way or the other. And the bias that they have, the pro-independence Scottish news media, definitely takes a pro-independence view when telling the Catalonia story. Mm. And so it is definitely a case that, depend, I think, depending on what views you had of the Scottish referendum, probably influences what you've read about Catalonia and therefore <laughs> your perceived views upon it. Okay. Let's say. So it, you get your view reinforced that you had already for, oh, for the Scottish subject before? I would, I would definitely say so, yes. Okay. Mm. And do you think that uh, such a situation and the reaction and, and I think some of the, at least, I guess, I mean, before the, the team that was sitting, I said it was ex to be expected that the Spanish government would react as it did react uh, on, on the October 1st um, uh, referendum. Would you say that for other countries that's, that's the necessary way to go, having um, a violent situation if you really want that? I mean, when you look to Scotland, are people, does it open eyes or do people say, no, that's, that's probably what we need to fight for? I would say that we were very fortunate in Scotland in that, especially the UK government, seeing the pressure from the separatist parties in Scotland took quite an, quite an open view to it and allowed there to be a, a public referendum. 
So I think that stopped a lot of those troubles before they could really develop. Um, I think it may have been different if five years further down the line in Scotland, having not been allowed a referendum, maybe there might, maybe there might have been some who had a push for violence. But I think the, the good thing about the Scottish situation is we, we had that very uncomfortable in places, quite aggressive debate about independence before it got to the stage of people contemplating violence or sort of taking unilateral action, shall we say. Would you even imagine that in Finland people would see a similar confrontation with police forces? Well, we had a civil war like 100 years ago where like was like absolute like terrible bloodbath. So of course it can happen anywhere. Okay. Like so, uh, but what I like regarding like how how people get informed, um, I think the situation is quite interesting. Like I I follow myself daily both uh, the Finnish and the French media, mm -hmm. and regarding both uh, what has happened in Scotland and in Catalonia, uh, if you were following those let's say traditional est established media like the traditional press and TV and so on. Both in France and in Finland, I have the feeling it was very unilateral, like stating like just you know the facts and the economic situation, and like no, it wouldn't make any sense to have independent Scotland, independent Catalonia, like wouldn't be viable. But then like those more like alternative newer media, which you would find online, which maybe more people follow today, uh, those were also very unilateral, and like we're young, but without stating any facts, was more like on that, you know, romantic idea of, yes, like revolution and new countries and freedom for the people. And like, if you were following social media, both in Finland and France, people who have an opinion would always be pro-independence, but their knowledge of the situation would be very shallow, would be more like guided by emotions and you know, like some mm. form of like romanticism. Yeah. Okay. My name is Torben, I'm coming from Germany. Um, your question was, uh, what is the role of the European Union um, and uh, how we would feel in our countries? Um, and uh, we heard a lot of, uh, about the perception here in Catalonia. We heard very little about the perception uh, in the rest of Spain and the rest of Europe. And we heard a lot of um, regional identity. I have a little bit different view here. I think the success factor of Europe to keep peace in the last 50, 60 years was that sovereignty and integrity of states, of member states, nations, in a political sense were accepted by everyone. Um, and the rule of law, uh, including human rights acceptance, uh, is one basic value in the Union. Um, and uh, considering that, I think the identity uh, of people is a very personal thing doesn't matter if it's a regional identity, a national identity, uh, a religious identity, or any other identity. Uh, if you look back in the past, identity-based movements have very seldom generated freedom and peace. Um, if we look into medieval Europe, uh, was split in thousands of states, all having wars against each other, and all claiming I have the right identity. So I think if we ask us the question here, uh, we need to discuss that. Uh, what, what do we want to give to regions or identities? And I think uh, a lot, as much as we can, as long as these basic uh, values are not broken. And if we look then to the situation here, I think um, we can ask the question, when is independence allowed or, or acceptable or not? Um, and uh, to my point of view, uh, neither human rights were uh, not accepted here, nor is Catalonia occupied, nor is uh, the population suppressed. Uh, there is Spain, the Spanish nation, the Spanish state is a democratic state. Uh, there's a long-lasting discussion between several regions in Spain and the national uh, government. Um, <coughs> how much independence, how much autonomy is given, which we have also in other regions of Europe. Um, if you compare it, the autonomous regions in Spain have approximately the same rights as the federal states in Germany, some more, some less, um, maybe less in, uh, in financial issues, more in educational issues, so, but in, in the end it's quite comparable. 
so we are not having a completely central stage here with uh, no uh, possibilities for the region. And then um, the Spanish constitution is very clear uh, that it's a United State with solidarity with, within the regions, accepting uh, several re nations within the nation. Um, so it's fitting, I think, the fact and gives the right with the quoted uh, paragraph or article to defend that. And I think if we look into the constitution of our home countries, uh, the unity uh, of the state of you're living in can be defended uh, by the national government. Um, and in the case of Germany, I very much hope uh, that uh, in such a comparable case, uh, the government will take all actions to avoid a splitting of the nation. Um, so I can maybe not agree to what steps the national uh, government here has taken. Uh, maybe they were not the most wise in a political sense, but from my point of view, also if you look back on a 50 years long uh, discussion, they're completely legal and legitimate. Um, hello, my name is Ruta, I'm coming from Latvia. And uh, yeah, the situation is completely nuts for me. And uh, I can also relate to that because um, we also have a region in Latvia where it's called Latgala. And they have their own language and like a little bit different, different culture than the rest of the Latvia has. But what we do, we don't consider them different. Oh, those guys are, you know, different. No, we consider them as also Latvians. And what we actually do, we kind of support them. So we encourage them to actually speak in their own dialect. They, they, they actually write books and poems. And uh, you can also, um, there are several schools in the region where you can actually send your children kind of to the after school group to actually learn how to write in the, in the dialect. And uh, yeah, so we actually support them. It's like, and whenever we have some kind of, I don't know, event or national celebration, we would always like try to inform people, yeah, this is how we do in Latgala region. So, so what I would like to see from Spanish government side to, to support Catalonia and um, kind of to inform people. So this is how they do things in their way. So, the, so I would say like, this is the reason why Catalonia is so different from Spanish, because I'm sorry, I would say from my point of view, because I'm not informed. So I would say, yeah, Catalonia and Spanish is so similar that I cannot see difference. And, and this is the reason why I think so, because I'm not informed, because Spanish government doesn't allow Cat Catalonian people to speak out, you know, and, and to, to inform the world. So we are different and this is, how, this is our way. So many things can be said. I'm just going to go more on an European Union level or more a central uh, level, which is how much of this uh, regional identity crisis that uh, a lot of European countries are having, um, how much is this um, connected with uh, financial crisis and uh, some sort of uh, broken social promise of uh, future economic development by joining the European Union? Uh, that's just the topic I would like to uh, somehow uh, launch. I mean, the connection between independent uh, uh, movements with a certain amount of failed uh, social and economic developments inside the European Union. I think it has a, a lot to do with it um, because then it, it goes connected into those guys, the the government, the capital, uh, they are taking all the money from our region. And uh, because uh, there is some corruption here that it is felt, because all companies are at this city and not mine city. And um, <clears throat> I, which I think this shows like, these are some symptoms to the problems that uh, come. So if I understand you right, what you're saying is, uh, it seems to be an emotional subject in the, in the first view, but if you look behind, it's actually mm -hmm. more an economic subject that is driven yes. by economic circumstances. Yes, it is not uh, mm -hmm. as simple as it seems. It's not okay. just that I was born here, therefore I want to become uh, a nation. No, but I'd like to add something to Ruta's uh, saying. Um, I've been following, maybe my view is a bias as my wife is Spanish, I'll be honest to say that. Um, but uh, here, for many years, uh, separatist uh, parties have been in power. Uh, so there's not suppression, and they had all possibilities to raise their voice. Uh, there was a lot of peaceful demonstrations uh, showing that they want more independence or full independence. 
so it's not uh, what now some of the top Catalonian politicians want to make believe that they cannot speak up. I think it was uh, as free as in any other uh, mm. country of the European Union. I remember that actually the separatism movement in Catalonia got momentum between 2008 and 2010. 2010 was the first referendum. Which so would support Jao's point. Which would yeah. support Jao's point, uh, because at that time uh, Spain went under the um, umbrella of the European uh, Monetary Fund and uh, had to follow austerity measures. Maybe that was the point where the Catalonians thought, oh, wait a second, aren't we uh, a wealthy part of Spain and maybe don't need that? Has it, so is it maybe actually an argument that is worthwhile that at the end it's the economic aspect that drives you to, to create your emotional identity, identity to a state, to a region? It's either an argument or it was used as an argument, that is maybe the question. Mm -hmm. uh, someone of the speakers before said the, was referring to the financial power here. Uh, I looked it up and I hope the figures are correct. Catalonia is about 16% of the Spanish population mm -hmm. and collects about 20% of the taxes. And if you consider that a lot of the national international companies are having their headquarters here, so uh, the tax they generate are paid here, uh, it's sure a difference to the average, uh, but it's not uh, an average that is uh, extraordinarily strong. Probably Bavaria has a much higher per capita difference to Bremen than uh, Catalonia to the rest of Spain. Um, I would like to add about this economical stuff um, because like let's say to the Brexit you know mm. a lot of companies actually moved out from UK just because they're like moving out of European Union so and so and at now point you say okay Barcelona could easily survive taxes if, if you would get full independence but would it be also after the independence because some companies could move out or like also people who are against independence they would move out so there's less people so I think it's also a question to the to the Catalonian people here so would you really believe would you be fully capable to run the whole government and the country you have if you would get independent I mean, for, for Latvia being a country that kind of joins the, let's say, the European integration process rather late, do you have even any understanding for anybody trying to kind of like to, to reverse this, this uh, peaceful process that uh, Torben talked about over the last years? I mean, how do you look at it? Do you find it a threat to the ideals that you actually followed in order to join the European Union? Um. I don't know. So uh, I mean, for me, it's like um, I would be sad <laughs> that like uh, that, that Barcelona region, Catalonia, would like move out of European Union because I see you guys in the European Union, and what people sometimes don't think about is like, yeah, we want to do independence, but like, hey guys, if you will mm -hmm. l remove yourself from Spain, then it's also removing yourself from European Union, and then. It will take years, maybe, to come to join the European Union, and it will take years to 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 organize all the situation within the country to be able to, to to join back in European Union. And I think, yeah, I think it is a threat to European Union because also, yeah, you said like Bavaria or like my region could also like say one day, hey, we want to be independent, and and then it we could like turn out in like two thousand small countries within the European Union. You know. And would that be a threat to the European Union, do, do you think? I think yes, because it would be too, much, too many entities to, to, to take care of, you know, like, I would say it, w it would be harder to gather all of us together, I would say. Okay, I mean, if you just try to one more time look at the role the European Union is playing right now uh, in the Catalonian crisis, how, how do you, how do you, what is your judgment? Is the European Union behaving good? Or not good, what do you think? Well, since I'm not watching TV and reading any news, so I just know partly some. Mm -hmm. and, but I think European Union is, I, w I would say they could do more. They could speak more. And I think that's just my opinion. They're too quiet about this topic. Okay. okay. Tom, do you have an opinion? Well, I don't know what they do behind the curtains, but I think an interesting fact that is now not European Union, but the uh, European Council of Regents uh, discussed the issue. Uh, on a motion of the German representatives and um, besides uh, the Flemish representative um, all were very doubtful if uh, that is a good move for Europe in total uh, to have more and more independence movements. Mm -hmm. Joe, what do you think? 
I think that if if uh, they are working behind the curtains, they are doing the proper thing, uh, basically because right now things are so things have escalated so much in the past year that uh, it's best to work a little bit more behind the curtains uh, regarding this topic. So, I mean, the European Union actually did uh, uh, comment in a press statement that they consider this completely an internal affair, mm -hmm. and that they feel that all the as long as all the legal um, um, aspects of the Spanish law are followed, mm -hmm. they don't consider there any need for their side to comment, even yes. to comment, right? In my opinion, what the European Union should do is to keep a neutral or uh, staying away from the from the fire uh, public position while working and mediating in the background uh, through itself or through other um, other uh, similar organizations uh, such as the Council of Europe of Regions. Okay. Yes, so I'm Jung Nass from uh, Gothenburg in Sweden and uh, back a little bit to this why I think some of these independence discussions arise is because whatever decision is made on any level where you're represented by either a representative government or a dictator uh, there will always be a minority or ma majority that is disliking these uh, decisions. It could be economic, uh, social or cultural uh, laws. Uh, and I think the more levels you have, the higher risk there is that you have some population disagreeing. Uh, it doesn't have to be big or small. But in the case of Catalonia, it seems these people are very concentrated in one region. Uh, and if this decision is made on European level, Spanish level, or maybe just the diplomatic levels in, uh, on the Iberian Peninsula, it doesn't matter. As soon as you have uh, dissatisfaction, you will have some people raising independence questions. Uh, so I think it's important for governments to understand. Um, in the case of the European Union, there's uh, many things that the European Union have done very good. So the Erasmus program and uh, promoting Schengen is really good platforms for promoting and encouraging interaction between cultures. But there's also been certain uh, decisions where uh, higher levels such as the European Union is forcing economic or social laws onto other cultures than they maybe should. And I think in the uh, case of Catalonia here, uh, I believe that Spain as a nation is uh, yeah, benefiting from having Catalonia in the Spanish nation, but on the same time, they have to be very careful what laws they force upon regions and what laws they then can accept that other people mm -hmm. uh, make decisions on themselves. Martin from uh, Germany. And I've, I've got some context. I grew up in South Africa during apartheid time. My wife is Spanish and I have family in Catalonia as well. The, the wife is Catalan and the, it's my wife's brother um, who's from Spain, who's from Alicante. Um, and, and for me, I have another couple of things that could make very, very, me very popular here, like being a strategy consultant, working a lot in mergers and acquisitions. And I think it's very often about what question are you talking about? And I think the question, independence, yes or no, is irrelevant. I think what has happened in Spain is that the political system, Spain has misbehaved and Catalonia has misbehaved. And the, 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 mm. the Catalonian government, uh, or the elected government, is very much pushing for independence, which is like a... I don't think it's truly understandable what independence is. It's so many different issues. And I have to say personally, if you're interested, do look at the, some of the parties being involved in the independence. It's really scary. I understand the arguments. I fully support independence, the, the view behind it. But the question is not, is it independence or not? The question from my perspective is, how can Catalonia best develop itself within Europe from all different aspects? And the question, is it independence or not? It's like. I would compare it to a marriage. <laughs> is it good to stay married, yes or no? It's a constant discussion, and the co discussion has stopped in, uh, in Spain. It's completely, um, I know people from Spain who are completely upset, completely emotional, and I know people from Catalonia. And I think in this context, if you have within Spain a situation 50-50, the last thing as a German that I would like to have is the German government interfering in Spain. <laughs> From my perspective, every time German did anything abroad was always bad. That's a different story. Um, <laughs> but the one thing is you need in this negotiation, so to speak, what is the topics and how do you approach them? And currently with the acting figures, the Spanish government basically saying the Catalonians are strange 
and the Catalonians saying we have to go. I don't see now, I think what is needed now is really time <laughs> and that people get back to a discussing mode and don't just talk about independence as yes or no. But how you describe it, it sounds like they need a mediator and actually our Spanish colleagues before more or less indicated the same thing, that the mediation is necessary. So, okay, let's, let's leave the Germans out, I guess we can agree <laughs> on that very quickly, but what about the European Union? Well, it's, 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 uh, my wife is coming tonight, so you can check with her. I think in a, in, a, in, a, in a marriage, mediation can start when both parties are ready. If the both parties are not ready, no mediation in the world will help you. And I think now if the European Union intervenes, they will be discussing, are we talking independence? Did 800 people go to hospital? And I've seen the... the I, I know not the to ones hospital are, injured. No, but it, it's, it's a big discussion in Spain. I'm not in the details. Maybe the Spanish people can help me. From the 800 people, the other side claims five of them spend a night, spend a night in hospital. So we shouldn't go on that level to discuss. But I think if, if you don't have the parties ready for mediation, don't go in as a mediator. And I agree with what Torben said before. We're not talking about uh, people being suppressed. There is no freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. There is no legal system. And I think now, for the time being, I wouldn't see how the European Union could improve the situation by starting official talks, because then you have to accept Puigdemont or whatever his, his current president is. And I don't think the time is ready for this. I think we, as Europeans, are not in a position now to help the situation by interfering. OK. Thank you. So, hello everyone. So, my name is Erwin. I'm from Brussels. And all of you don't know what, what is the situation right now in Belgium. We have two communities, um, but we're still a country. And there is indeed some discussion to uh, split the countries, but actually, the Belgian right now, they don't, I, they think that actually it's like a, a, a probably a story of the future, maybe like in 20 or 30 years or something like that, if nothing changed. Um, and during the story of Cata Catalonia and, uh, and with, with Spain, I felt like a little bit like the same story than, than Belgium, but actually there is still some differences. Um, maybe first to answer your, your question about the European Commission, I think is uh, right now the, U the European Commission focuses a lot about the, the European uh, integration between countries, uh, how to, uh, to find a balance between the new members and the old members and so on, and they don't focus a lot about what's happening inside the, the, the countries in terms of uh, culture differences, minorities, no, it's not really minorities, but like areas, like communities in, um, inside of the countries, like, for example, Flanders or Catalonia. I think that there is a massive responsibility of the government to, uh, to see what's happening and what is the interaction between these communities with the rest of the country. And as was m mentioned previously by Joao, uh, there is a problematic, so there is this financial crisis that appeared like in 2006 and 2007, and at that time it created a, a bigger gap in terms of um, uh, poverty in certain areas, and you, we, could, we could feel uh, a high gap, a high differences in the economy, and the richest area should pay more for the other, for the other part. Like moreover, there is like these identity differences where they don't maybe feel like the the national identity. Um, in that case, like if I if I can say an analogy, it's like a family where you have several children, and you have one of the child who feel different, who don't feel like the family identity, who feel like marginalized, and he, he, he earned the, the, the highest amount of salary, and he needs to help the other one. And, but he doesn't feel like part of this family, so why he should help the others? And I think it's the role of the parents to, uh, to, to foster this family identity and to prove to this child that actually he has his place in his family. And actually that's what failed actually for, for the, the Spanish government. I had the impression that they're always talking, especially about what they're doing during the 14th time, by using violence and create a higher gap to say, okay, we accept you. Mm -hmm. I think that was like totally the wrong way. It's like having parents to say, okay, you want to quit? I will use violence to force you to stay in our country, so in our family. Just totally illogical. And I think that, for example, in the case of, of, of um, Catalonia, and, Catalonia and, and Spain, there is indeed a lack of communication between both of them. Like the, the child, Catalonia, uh, a major child, sorry for that. Uh, the child wanted to, um, to say, okay, I will leave and I don't want to listen to anyone else. I want to do it. And the parents say, okay, I will use violence. 
in both situa- in both uh, sides, it was not the right approach. They should like more communicate like in a friendly way. But the thing is, like none of them wanted to uh, to have this discussion, and that was the role of the European Commission to be the mediator and to try, like for example, like a psychologist that you can that you can uh, consult when you have uh, family problems. And uh, in the case of Belgium, for example, if I can speak about my country, uh, I think there is different uh, things that um, that's different different than uh, than than, uh, than Spain. We have Brussels that actually, um, if you want to s- the split of the country, you need to negotiate about Brussels. But Brussels is a French-speaking city, like the majority of people are French speakers, and uh, and the, the Flemish people don't want to to abandon Brussels. So actually, Brussels is the uh, is our way to connect both countries. That's why a lot of Belgian people don't really believe in the, in the split of the country. And also, like, the journalists has actually also a, a, a major responsibility inside because they love to talk about the split of the country, and I think that for, for, for Spain it was also the case. Um, but actually, I think that there's not, they don't, they all, always spread, like, rumors and, and also false ideas, and I think, yeah, journalists have their big yeah, responsibility. Actually, Thanks for the explanation, and I think uh, when we look to your uh, example with the parents and the children, I think what the parents should try to explain is maybe the value to the child that you refer to as not trying to sponsor the others, what the value is of basically being part of the family. And that brings us back to what the European Union maybe can contribute to this. Um, Do we have really an understanding of the value of being part of a a united Europe? Let's leave the European Union as... uh, administrative body a little bit outside because it's a technocratic dis- discussion that we then could easily have. But I guess you all feel, especially as we're sitting here together, that Europe has a value. Being European has a value. Being united in Europe has a value. Is that, at this point, actually even an incentive for Catalonia to drive their subject forward because they feel, I'm just leaving an, 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 an unlike mother, but I get actually become, I, I'm part of a bigger and much more uh, interesting family. So is, is the European Union actually an, a, maybe an objective for an incentive for these movements that we see in many parts of Europe to get stronger because they feel I finally can correct maybe something that I feel was not right several years ago, but I can still become part of what is today a very successful unification. Is that, Martin, do you want to react on that? I think it's, it's the, the, what you want is not necessarily what you're going to get, and a fantastic uh, sentence from a consultant, but uh, if, if you look at Venezuela, for example, I think there was a government with a fantastic objective, all the, the, the thoughts were right, but the process completely went nuts, and, and the country today uh, is a complete disaster. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's really the big question is how can you, can you solve it now, and, the, and that's, that's, I think now there's really, it's interlocked. And I still feel now getting the Spanish or Catalonian challenge, which I understand from both sides, now on a European level, I don't think it's going to help Spain whatsoever. Because just if I look at the German government, there's one part of the government going to say, I'm exaggerating, the Catalonians are nuts, the independence people, and the other one is going to say the other side. So I think transforming this challenge to a higher level, I, I don't see how this is going to improve the situation. But Catalonia is not alone, right? There, you know, we talked about Scotland, we talked about uh, Flanders, we talk about. Uh, I mean, even you can go back to Kosovo. Yeah. Uh, so you have many parts in Europe where you have uh, situations where people somehow create a local identity. So how should the European Union deal with that in order to make sure that its major objective of peace stays intact? On the other side, they do not, let's say, incentivize governments to actually suppress like the Spanish government did with Catalonia which you described as an impasse yeah that's an unfortunate situation how we make sure that that is not suppressed and thereby creates violence and a reaction as a counter reaction I would not support the statement that the Spanish government suppressed Catalonia I think there's there's two schools of thoughts in Spain the one is saying we have a legal system we have a, a constitution and we can't change things and I think this is I fully understand, and I also don't think that uh, violence was the answer by the Spanish government. There have been incidents of violence, but I completely reject the statement Spain has been reacting by violence, for example. And I think it's, 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 it's a very tricky situation, mm-hmm. um, and, and I think we tend to overestimate quick fixes. And also the, 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 the argument there's a democratic government in Catalonia, they want independence. Yes, this is, uh, it's true that in a democratic election, 
the majority of the government, not the popular vote, is in favor of independence. But if I look at some of the local governments in Germany, <laughs> where you have a 50% majority, I, I don't want, within one instance, local governments being able to change. And I think some processes, you need time. And time uh, will be of, of uh, necessity. And I don't currently see something that the European institutions could change in the short term. That's just, I don't see it. I, okay, but when you have the, 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 the stone rolling down the hill, that is when you start a timeline like the Catalonian referendum did, do you think you still have time to wait until what happens? Because there is damage on the way already, as we can see. And do you think that has, can heal itself just by waiting? No, definitely not. I think what's very important is that the communication starts, that there's discussions. But, uh, but how you but get that in place? Who does it? Who, if, if you, you, I think your example with the marriage, you, know, if you, need to, you need to be willing to accept the mediator in order to be mediated. I think that's a very good statement. But how you come to that point? Yeah, and the second thing, you need to agree on what the mediator does. That's even worse. <laughs> so do we talk about fast affairs? Do we talk about the future? And I think this process needs to be going. And I have the impression that there's a lot of mediation going on in the background. So I don't think that, for example, the German government is not doing anything. Mm. I do have the impression that, that many options are being looked at. There's a lot of discussions. But the one option I do not see is that now the European uh, uh, Commission starts and process on should there be independence, yes or no. This, this is what I'm saying. Okay. That would not be the next step. Okay, thank you, Martin. One more statement from your side. Uh, not connected to that, really, but I think uh, what you need to do in general is to let people speak their will, their culture, their political views, because it's when you do oppression, no matter where it happens or did not happen, uh, it's when you oppress these views that you get these conflicts. So I think to promote uh, the diversity within Europe is good, but any attempt to homogenization of a country or region can only hurt. Because uh, I think you should let minorities speak up. And I mean, in Sweden we also have uh, examples with the Sami people that uh, is claiming more right than the Swedish government is giving them. Uh, but now you have, they have a quite big cultural um, room in the Swedish society, but not political uh, influence, uh, mainly because we have different interests in the nature in the north. But by having this cultural expression, you can at least postpone, and uh, we never know what will happen, but you postpone the more violent uh, debates or uh, fights. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I think uh, time-wise uh, we need to come to an end. Um, if I look to the um, uh, sequence of discussion we had, starting with our colleagues from Spain, I think it was interesting to see how, they, how different they experience the current situation and that uh, the, um, the subject is actually quite emotional when you experience it yourself. And I think none of uh, us who has not been involved in that subject on a personal side, either being Catalonian or Spanish, is difficult to make a judgment. Um, what I so understand from the discussion is that, uh, and I think your point with the mediation, I think is actually a good one, that you, if you want to solve something between two conflicting partners, they both need to be willing actually to discuss this with someone. So can the European Union play a role here? I think that needs to come actually from both sides. They need to ask them and it cannot be a one-sided affair. I think that's maybe uh, an interesting takeaway. The um, other subject which I think uh, shines through through the discussion is that we have a situation in Europe which um, uh, can see the European Union as a very successful construct because within the European Union there has been no war since 70 years since we are uh, past the World War II, but it's also clear that um, as the European Union progresses there seem to be more and more interests of um, local identification. And this may be a, a counter effect of a successful Europe because maybe people are now see an opportunity to identify themselves more with something they have a stronger heritage with because the European Union maybe doesn't give that much of a, of a, of a, of a warm feeling to many people in, in, in Europe. Yeah, we discussed this in a former talk show and criticized the European Union as being a very technocratic affair which doesn't really have a vision, which doesn't really install a purpose in many people in Europe. So I think we need to be aware that, especially we here in this room, that I think we all love Europe, we love the ability that it has given us, enabled us to live a life um, that uh, I think is, is, is very special, that that is not for granted. 
Uh, it is actually the circumstances of many uh, agreements in the past and that forces continue to develop and and the example of Catalonia we can see that arguments itself are not always the solution. There needs to be a lot of compassion and, uh, and dialogue in order to avoid that actually an escalation occurs. So I hope that um, we all could enhance our understanding of that situation through this one hour of discussion a little bit and uh, if there are no further Final comments from everybody. I would close and thank you very much for your active contribution and participation, for the courage of the people stepping forward, taking a seat. And uh, please trust us that we will do uh, with all your statements uh, a very respectful, open and factual assessment so that you can see that your voice is later on uh, resubmitted in a, in a true way. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the day.